Hello friends, welcome to AI Flux. This week has been absolutely incredible for LLMs and generative AI. When it comes to speedups on Apple Silicon that can make these LLMs run 23 times faster, Stable Diffusion XL 0.9, and all of the developments there, and now Midjourney version 5.2. And this is not necessarily just a mid Midjourney update. This is an update of monumental proportions with experimental features that are absolutely incredible. So let's get into it. So there are a few big things to hit here. There are some prompting improvements, some improvements in how Midjourney actually interprets language, and there are a number of groundbreaking improvements when it comes to how Midjourney interprets reality and interprets depth of field. They also have a new, what they're calling aesthetic system, which basically makes Midjourney guess what you think will look better with less prompt and less iteration, which is actually an improvement for everyone because it means you have to create fewer images, use less of their resources, and you get what you want faster. And that's absolutely incredible. But that's nothing compared to what they're calling this new zoom out feature, which is a combination of upscaling, uh, manipulation of depth of field, and a really interesting, completely new take in terms of computational optics. It also lets you create these incredible animations using a few other external tools, and we'll get to that. I think that's actually one of the coolest things that artists have done immediately out of the bat. And there are a number of experimental changes that throw a lot of entropy into this new 5.2 system that I think is just incredible. So first, the aesthetic system. So basically what this is, is it's a system that makes prompting more specific. What they call this is a system that results in improved aesthetics and sharper images, slightly improved coherence and text understanding. So this is likely more so happening in a language model that's understanding prompts, um, similar to what Stable Diffusion XL did by using two different um, levels of clips to understand higher level detail and fine level detail. They also say there's increased diversity. Sometimes you might need to roll more than once to get what you want. Um, by this, they mean diversity in setting and in texture, which is kind of cool. And the biggest thing is they finally fixed the stylize command, which now should have a strong effect on the amount of actual stylization applied to your image um, closer to V3. The command goes from tac tac stylize zero to a thousand and the default is 100. And it's right to look at stylize as a fluid option in Midjourney. Another cool kind of experimental mode they have now is what they're calling high variation mode. So this is now turned on by default. It makes all variation jobs much more well varied. To toggle the type and settings, you can actually click through different variation modes and underneath all of the upscales, you can also choose the amount of variation you want within an upscale, which previously was kind of hard to get right with Midjourney. This is something they didn't really talk too much about in their release, but this new uh, shorten command, I think is kind of cool. So first I wanna jump into a really cool example of this zoom effect. The zoom effect in Midjourney does not give you the animations out of the back. It just gives you the option to have four different versions at different focal lengths and zooms when you're doing. This is a prompt of an Inuit woman in the Arctic. So this is the closest zoom, and then we'll zoom out a bit. This clearly the same subject, right? Coherent subject. I would, I would argue this is some form of clever image to image transition. Again, you have these two sort of icy TP looking structures in the back with a very beautiful sun in the background and the shadows are perfect. I mean, look at that. Clearly the, the, it, the model is aware of where the sun is in the upper right. Let's zoom out again. And I'm not sure if this is why 1.5X or 2X, but again, now we have the same shadow, more of these structures in the background. Again, same subject and a little bit more texture thrown in probably to keep your eyes focused on the same subject. And really, I keep saying this, but this is my favorite thing with Midjourney is it knows how to play with your eyes so that you focus on what it thinks you want the subject to be. Sometimes it does it with clever little details like in the snow here. Sometimes it does it with depth of field like it's also doing here. And sometimes it does it with lighting. So it'll give you the most detail right where it wants your eyes to be focused. And this is another zoom out. And as you can see here, this is what I mean by um, focal length changing. Because if between these, the subject is effectively the same size, different than these two where the subject changes size. Here the subject is, in the last two, the subject is the same size. You have a very similar background, but we have this ultra wide angle kind of look. We have this ultra wide angle kind of look, and I think this is just incredible. Now, imagine what you could do if you were changing the prompt in between, and then you morphed them into an animation. 
and this is what you would get. So again, incredible, it's nearly perfect, and this is pretty ominous. I think it's kind of cool, actually. Here's another example, and I'll leave a few more of these kind of playing so you can see them. The way these are made is you can make a zoom out animation by layering multiple iterations of a prompt and keyframing scale and position. Again, the key is keyframing scale and position. Then this is how you fake retaining resolution while zooming out. So these are, these are so cool. So, so cool. I, I keep saying they're cool. Uh, and people have been complaining I say that too much. And I do, but, but wow. So let's jump into some static generations. I just wanted to get this incredibly cool feature out of the way first. So these are comparisons between 5.1 and 5.2. And what I think is kind of interesting is gamma and color depth, in my opinion, is just way, way deeper in 5.2. So this is 5.1 and 5.2. So I would say faces are clear, similar to Stable Diffusion XL. There is greater detail. There are fewer kind of moray patterns that have been mucked into images. Fabrics and complex textures seem to transition better, which is something that previously was really hard to get right. And it's actually a big reason mathematically as to why hands were so hard to get right, because the model had a really hard time understanding when one texture or one um, kind of radiance reflectivity transitioned to another. But what's kind of cool here is you can see that these sort of threads are transitioning into this stone and the skin here, th there are still some kind of moray patterns. You can see around the face and around the creases in the skin, there's sort of what looks like uh, kind of stitches. And that is the model being a little confused, but granted, this is still wildly state of the art. So this prompt here is Strasbourg Alfresco Scene Natural Light. This is in 5.1, so you can see the Signs are a little kind of hit or miss. There's a person here, but they look it looks like their head is sort of a piece of a pot. What it gets right is the plants and the luminance. Clearly the sun is shining in all in a single direction. And then the reflectivity coming off of these chairs is incredible. And actually the chair legs are mostly right. You can see it's getting a little bit confused, but for the most part, it's really nailing it. And this is 5.1. So 5.2 is this. So again, much more color depth. A lot of the reason why longer prompts sometimes result in less color depth is because the model is trying to fit all the detail in and it wants it to still be coherent. So basically when you're looking at you know, the, the certainty or, or how much you want it to stick to your prompt, that can sometimes cause problems. Now, what's interesting here is let's look at what's going wrong first because I think that's more interesting. So you can see the ends of the chairs and the tables are sort of melding into the transitions and sort of the boundaries between bricks. So that, you know, a little bit of a miss there, but generally speaking, look how much more coherent and lively and vibrant this entire generation and this image is. You also get under lighting, and this is important because it shows the model is aware of how light passes through different types of mediums. So through, through a tree or through this awning, and the people here are a little mangled, but they're in the distance. And one thing that's kind of interesting with models like this is sometimes they get confused with how much detail they actually have to use when they're given a specific focal point. So basically what happened here likely is that it was given a focal point and it assumed, oh, well, you know, this is the focal point. I shouldn't really need to put too much detail into the background. And unfortunately, there was a little bit too much clarity around these plants. And if you think about it from a kind of a machine vision perspective, understanding how close these plants are to you and how close this person maybe reading a newspaper is, that's really hard. And as you can see, they're right, like laterally, they're right next to each other. So that's something that we still have yet to see a lot of these models get really good at parsing. So this prompt is a photo of a beautiful house, mid-century modern style glass walls forest. This is 5.1. Again, very impressive in terms of a model, especially with glass. Glass is something that, especially when you're looking through into the background, is incredibly hard to get right. And you can see the reflections here are actually right too. And the reason this is hard is the model has to think really, really hard as to where the sun is actually coming from. And you can see that we have these sort of infinite trees that are kind of funny looking, but farther back, they look pretty real. And um, what's interesting is my 
most experience helping people who are non-technical using these models has been architects. Um, I have a friend who's an architect and basically they, they can take renders that would have taken weeks to do and now they can do them in like an hour, which is crazy. Yeah, so this looking cohesive, I think at this point, relative to other companies, Midjourney clearly wins in terms of architecture. What's really cool is the, the biggest workflow I've helped them develop is where they can actually take um, concept designs, scan them and put them into Midjourney and then get renderings in, in minutes. So this is 5.1, this is 5.2. So again, much more color gamut, much more sort of gamma radiance going on. There's even an understanding of where furniture would maybe go. I've also realized that in my testing that shrubbery and landscape and plants in general can now be prompted in mid journey, which is pretty freaking cool. Yeah, I mean, just look at this. The glass reflectivity is almost perfect. There's a warm glow from the interior. Of course, this track lighting is a little off, but I mean, wow. And there, there are two levels. You can tell it put a nice kind of a walkway with stairs here that are clearly made of stone, not wood. Sometimes you get architectural textures all over the place, but you can see here, this is kind of a nice carbon steel or a coltan steel. This is probably the most impressive to me. The artistic stuff is cool, but the stuff that has to look realistic and look reasonable and kind of metered, like, like a person would actually have developed it, is awesome. And the other thing that's really tough with, with some of these models when you're doing very dimensional things and not kind of these freeform curvy designs is depending on your focal length and a number of other factors, avoiding distortion in images is at this point, one of the more impressive things to me with these models. So architecture, mid-journey 5.2, absolutely killing it. Now, low poly gaming stuff is also kind of interesting. So the prompt here is low poly rendering of palm trees on an island, vibrant colors, isometric view. And isometric views is actually something that Stable Diffusion is quite good at. If you've used Scenario GG, or even some of the tools in ClipDrop. This kind of thing is really where a lot of these models excel. And I think this is the first one where 5.2 adds some detail, but the comparison is close. So this is 5.1. As you can tell, the water, I think, is the most impressive part of this with the re reflection or the refraction of what's actually on the island and these little waves that are going around. Uh, of course, the boundaries are a little coarse, uh, but isometrics are actually an area where these models have excelled for quite some time. So that's 5.1, and this is 5.2. So again, way more depth, right? We have these mountains in the background, we have some clouds. There's visibly more detail in the palm trees. The, the fronds and the trunks have their own textures. And we have um, this kind of interesting jetty and staircase and erosion going on. So there's an enhanced level of detail, but honestly, I would be hard pressed to call this isometric, and I think this is an example of where Midjourney might actually be working too hard to get something that it thinks looks great, which in my opinion is one of the only drawbacks to these models. Um, they, they make stuff that looks incredible and they know kind of what scratches the right part of the human brain to be intrigued to look at something. However, it just went too far. And this is why I like stable diffusion based models and running on my own because you can really fine tune exactly what you want and you don't have to have a model holding your hand to a point that you get something that maybe is too perfect or is too much of an inference of what you actually want. And I would also argue that the water effects here, it's trying to make them too good, and I think it's detracted from kind of that goofy animated isometric look. So let me know what you think in the comments. Let me know if you think this is better than Stable Diffusion XL. And yeah, as always, I hope you all have learned something. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. And as always, we will see you in the next video.